is no nay never. No nay never. Today's ride would take us from the top of the amazing Connor Pass to the Talbot Ferry and our final destination of Kilkey Bay. As you leave the top of the Connor Pass and head down, you notice that the road changes and starts becoming tighter, narrower and in some places, single track. And in many ways, makes the riding more interesting. And yet again, more stunning views all around us. I know we've said it before, but the beauty of Ireland really has blown us away. And the Connor Pass is just another one of those must-do rides on the Wild Atlantic Way. The N86 runs parallel with the Tralee Ship Canal, which if you follow it along, eventually brings you to the county town of Kerry itself, Tralee. The town is probably most famous for the Rose of Tralee International Festival, which has been held annually in August since 1959.
founded in 1970, Listowel is the home of Ireland's oldest literary festival. Ballybunion is a busy seaside resort. The area is famous for its seaweed baths and the world famous Ballybunion Lynx Golf Course, which was ex President Bill Clinton's favourite place to play golf. They've even erected a statue in his honour on Main Street. Apparently, this was the first statue of Bill Clinton on public display in the world. Troubles I had have been washed away I'm cleaning up my act and moving on In the silence of my room I'll sleep all night and get up at noon There's nothing to distract me in my dreams Like a pillow on my face No one can hurt or invade my space I still walk the streets with my head Suitably refreshed after a coffee stop, and we're back on the road to catch the Tarbot Ferry. Well, I was that for perfect timing. I'd booked tickets online the night before, but actually you don't need to, you can pay as you get on the ferry. It takes 20 minutes to cross the Shannon Estuary, and the ferries leave from Tarbot every hour on the half hour, from Monday to Saturday.
Having inquired with the hotel about parking spaces, we were told there is no car park, but most bikers just stick it outside on the pavement. Good afternoon, folks. Here we are in Kilkee. Kilkee by the sea. Still on the Wild Arctic Way. And we just checked into our hotel for the day, which is the Bayview Hotel over here. So let's go and check out our room for tonight. Well, it's very compact. I think. Oh, it looks like a really nice place. And when we came in, there was a load of um, signs saying that it had awards really from 2014 through to 2020. Yeah, so best places to eat and stay. It looks like a good place. It'd be interesting to see. Great location right on the coast. We're going to have a wander down and see. Uh, room's small, but clean and lovely. Bathroom's fine. Yeah, so? Shower rather than a tub, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so all in all, Let's see what it's like. Let's go and check out Guinness O'Clock. And here's the actual. Not another seafood chowder. Looks really good. Pan fried sea bass. Sue's so going for another starter. So I just went for a starter. That's a huge, huge, huge spring roll. It looks amazing now. Push down the bottom of it. Shortly. So we woke up to another beautiful sunny day, decided to take a stroll down to the beach and then head back for some breakfast. So how would we rate our stay at the Bayview Hotel in Kilkee Bay? As the name suggests, the Bayview really did overlook the bay and was a couple of minutes walk to the sea. It was in a lovely location for enjoying the pretty little seaside town of Kilkee. We opted for a standard double and our room number 107 was very small and little dark, but it was clean and had a large flat screen TV. The bathroom was also small with nowhere to store toiletries, but at least the shower was good. We ate in the bar rather than the main restaurant, but the menu is apparently the same and the food really was excellent. The staff were friendly and helpful and the restaurant team were particularly attentive. Once again, we'd been led to believe that our accommodation offered private parking and once again, we were disappointed to find that the parking was on the main road. We did find a spot on the pavement which was slightly better than the roadside, but it really would be helpful if Booking.com verified claims of private secure parking, particularly for us bikers. Would we stay again? The food and service didn't disappoint and a larger room might help, but sadly the Bayview failed when it came to safety for the bikes, so probably not. 
Well, folks, we had a great night last night here at the Bayview Hotel. Um, fantastic food, great guineas, of course. And today is our, we're off on our penultimate stop of this amazing Wild Atlantic Way tour. Today we're off to Galway. So what, the weather's looking great again. How lucky are we being? Amazing. Anyway, let's get on the road and check in later on. Today's route was going to take us north on the N67 to the beautiful Cliffs of Moor and then onto the stunning coast road of the R477 before heading into Galway. The little village of Doombeg traces its origins back to the 6th century, but I suppose its most popular claim to fame is the fact that in 2014, a bloke called Donald Trump bought the lodge and golf club for an estimated 15 million euro. I was curious when I rode past a sign saying Spanish Point, wondering what possible connection could there be with the Spanish and the west coast of Ireland. Turns out that it takes its name from the unfortunate Spanish who died here in 1588, when many of the ships of the Spanish Armada were wrecked during stormy weather. the Cliffs of Moor are the second most popular attraction in Ireland, second only to the Guinness factory in Dublin. The cliffs truly are an amazing sight, rising to a height of over 700 feet, they run 8 miles along the coast and were formed 320 million years ago. We would have loved to have spent more time there, but unfortunately an oil warning light on my bike necessitated us finding a garage with some decent oil sooner than later. The small village of Doolin has a long-standing reputation as the home of Ireland's traditional music and folk scene.
This R477 road just provides miles of fantastic riding with beautiful views. And so we arrived in Galway, arguably Ireland's most bohemian city. Apparently it's known as the festival capital of the country because it hosts about 122 festivals and events every year. It also marks the halfway point on the Wild Atlantic Way and it's the only city on the entire 2,500 kilometre route. It's also famous for its culture, food and music and we're looking forward to exploring a lot of that this evening. But first, we found our B&B so let's go and check in. Well folks, here we are, made it to Galway, our penultimate stop on our Irish tour. And we are here, a little B&B &B called The Stop, which comes highly recommended. Anyway, let's go in and check out the room. And we're in room one, which I've got to say, looks very tidy and kind of nice and modern, if a little snug. small. <laughs> uh, snug. Very snug, actually. So we've and got... the bathroom is even snugger. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of basic. Well, There's no TV or anything. No TV. No, no Shit. TVs. And if you're claustrophobic, yeah, you might kind of have a bit of a panic attack in you. So, that didn't take long, did it? Hopefully Goldway will be bigger than this. We'll check in later. Now it's time for a Guinness and some food. It's like a lighty spot. The King's Head. And you know what I might? I think I might pass a Guinness tonight for a change. So, large pin and are for you, and for a change, I'm going to have Ta-da! Yeah! Cheers! 
seafood chowder. And it's really good. Soup of the day for me. Uh, beef and Guinness stew. Beef and Guinness stew. With champ, which is mashed potato with an onion in it. Yeah. Washed down with a fine bottle of Rioja. Yeah. Well, folks, that was the king's head. Over there, and what a deal! What a great deal! That was fantastic, fantastic Guinness, fantastic food. Right, hold on, let's let's wander around, find a busker, maybe another Guinness. Fantastic. We're a little bit squiffy now and we're going to wind our way back to our B&B. So if you're coming to Galway, would we recommend a stay at the Stop B&B? We had heard that the Stop was an amazing place and had been featured in a number of magazines, so our expectations were high, particularly because even allowing for city prices, this place was not cheap. It's a B&B in a 15 minute brisk walk along the busy main road into the Latin Quarter of Galway, where all the main pubs and restaurants are. To say we were disappointed with our accommodation would be an understatement. We really aren't demanding people, but we've had more space in previous bathrooms than was available in the entire stop's bedroom. It reminded me of a youth hostel I stayed in as a schoolgirl with no TV, not just in our room, but anywhere in the building, a homemade bed of hardboard and a sink located at the bottom of the bed, as it didn't fit in the ensuite, which was the smallest either of us had ever seen. The storage, if you can call it that, was a two foot wide shelf with a few coat hangers next to the sink. Yep, everything was next to the sink, except the loo. Credit to the room designers for creating this tiny ensuite. I could actually touch all four walls while sitting on the loo. It's a good job Brian and I are fairly small people. Anyone of a larger build would genuinely struggle to fit in with the sliding door closed. The fact that the room was clean was the only thing that justified a two. We did ask the owner if there was a room with more space, but all the rooms and en-suites were apparently of a similar size. To give him his credit, he was extremely helpful and offered us his office to store some of our kit. The lady who checked us in was also very helpful with pointing out local amenities. The B&B didn't offer an evening meal, but our breakfast was included in the not insignificant cost. The eggs were nice, but the choice of cold buffet, if you prefer a lighter brekkie, was really pretty poor. Parking is a very small space at the back of the building. It is relatively secure, but we were advised to get there early as the space is on a first come, first serve basis, and there really isn't anywhere else we would want to have left the bikes. This place certainly deserves a ward for keeping costs down to a minimum, but not, we feel, for comfort and the little extras you would expect for the price. We were hugely disappointed and felt a tad ripped off. It certainly wouldn't be on our highly recommended list. 